It's third degree. It's our identity theft show. Coming up, we expose the modus operandi that crooks use to steal your identity. We go undercover to investigate ID fraud and Home Affairs demonstrates the new chipped ID cards, which will soon make life extremely difficult for criminals. But first, we look at two horrifying cases of ID theft. Imagine discovering that someone has taken out a loan or opened a furniture account in your name. Or even worse, that you are married to someone you have never met. Sitle Klope and Sibusi Sungomazulu compiled this report. Boxburg resident Hamilton Siboza got the fright of his life when he received a text message out of the blue from his bank. An amount of over 4,000 rand was about to be deducted from his account. It turned out someone had taken a loan out in his name at a business in Boxburg called Real People, which provides credits to individuals. He rushed in to query it. statement, show within 10 years, a building material, a sprints, about to the tune of 60,000 rands. Then another shock. A call from a furniture store. Among other games, I see here a Russell's bank keeper and a corner, but you know, account corner Russell's, but I think a TV corner isn't just a TV about to the tune of like about 15,000. Again, Hamilton went to investigate. He discovered that to get a loan, the fraudsters used a fake ID, fake bank statement even a fake payslip. Apparently, I am young, but I found the original account. But the information is not found in SM70. Their modus operandi was the same at yet a third store. When he went to get answers, the furniture shops were slow to act. Then Third Degree started asking questions. Initially, they told us they were unable to comment, that the matter was under investigation. But we pushed them, Finally, they acknowledged the accounts had been opened fraudulently and had closed them. To their credit, real people took immediate action, sent us this email. They acknowledged that Hamilton was the victim of identity fraud, that someone had even forged his signature, and so they refunded his instalment and closed the account. Despite this, Hamilton and his family are still feeling the dreadful consequences. His credit record is tarnished. next year, and The family almost fell apart. I honestly must be It's like some for or what like until we went to these shops. Luckily, we shopping once as I couldn't a copy ID lay Apparently, But in an act of good faith. Both stores have now started the process of clearing Hamilton's name at the Credit Bureau. Despite efforts to curb them, ID scams are rife. They've ruined many people's lives. One of them was 39-year-old Zamum Tetwa, a Johannesburg mother. It took her over a year to sort out the mess. In 2011, she was pickpocketed in downtown Johannesburg. To her horror, when she went to apply for a new ID sometime later, she discovered that on the home face computer system, she was married. Her surname was now Diallo. In 2009, I Confused, she applied for her ID at another home affairs, this time in Orlando. 
hoping that there'd been a mistake. When she got her new ID, it still showed that she was married. The problem had not gone away. They even showed her a copy of the marriage certificate. Her so-called husband was a foreigner. Home Affairs even accused her of marrying for money, a common practice, apparently, to enable foreigners to get South African citizenship. When she tried to sort out the mess, she was given the runaround. And once, when she went to collect UIF, she was told the name on her ID did not correspond to their records, and so she went home empty-handed. Zama went into a depression, lost weight, started getting migraines. But all that has now changed. When Third Degree intervened, Home Affairs finally gave her their full attention, agreed to help sort out the mess. In December 2012, she collected her new corrected ID. She was once again single. Her nightmare finally over. Coming up, everyday household items used to steal your identity. We expose how fraudsters operate.